Welcome to another five minute Lightroom tutorial. Today we're talking about color grading in Lightroom. Hello and welcome. I'm photographer Tim Northy or better known as TK North. If you're new here in this particular series, I pick a part of Lightroom and try and explain as much information as possible in five minutes or close to. Today we're doing color grading. So color grading is probably my favorite part of editing. I love playing around with color. It's going to be hard to keep this one to five minutes, but I'll do my best. Remember to hang around to the end of the video because I am going to give you information where you can get a free preset with some of my color grading. I'm also going to go through the Adobe color wheel at the end really quick, which is a really fun way to play around with your colors. So let's not waste too much time. Let's get five minutes on the clock, jump into Lightroom and get started. So the first thing you want to do when color grading is correct the white balance. So this is pretty simple. I wouldn't get too creative when you're playing around with white balance because it's something you can play around with your colors later on. So you can come up to temperature and tint these two sliders here, adjust it by using the sliders. You can also use these presets if you shot in raw and you've got metadata. So auto will do its best to find the correct white balance. That's a bit off. So I might want to drag that a little bit more blue. The other way to do it is to use this selector tool. So once you've clicked on that, you want to find an area in the photo, a small area that's all white. So I can click on the snow, for instance, with this one, and it will automatically adjust the white balance depending on that area you clicked on. So that's pretty simple. That's done a good job. You can go and adjust the sliders further if you need to. So the second one is actually your tone curve. So your tone curve, of course, is a really powerful way to change the overall tone of your image. You can also play around with the color there. So if you come down to tone curve, let's move across to a different image. So you come to your tone curve. Overall, it will show you the total RGB curve. You've got your shadows, midtones, highlights, basically those darker areas up towards your lighter areas on this curve. Make sure this isn't selected because you won't be able to go to these individual curves. So you've got the individual curve for red, green, and blue. Let's start with the blue. If I wanted to say add a little bit of blue to the shadows, I'm gonna create a point in the middle, just bring that back to the center. And then I'm gonna drag up a little bit from this side, which is my shadows. So I can add in just a tiny bit of blue to my shadows like so. So if I come over to green, say I wanted to maybe take away a little bit of green, add in a little bit of magenta to those midtones. Magenta being complementary to green. So if I pull down, it's going to add in magenta, but I just want to add in a tiny bit. Be very subtle with your tone curves because as you saw there, big adjustments are really going to ruin your image really quickly. So the next one, I'm going to come to red. So red, I can either add in a little bit of red to the midtones or I can take away a little bit of red to the midtones. So I don't mind that either way. You've got a little bit more pink there if you pull it up or if you pull it down, you like more of a blue you've got that as well. So if I turn the tone curve off, you can see those little adjustments, how I've made kind of a change to the overall tone and color of the image. So the third one is split toning. So let's jump to another image. So this is where you can play around with color in the highlights and the shadows a little bit more. Firstly, you've got your highlights and the hue. If you hold down option or alt, you can actually see which color you're adding in. So for highlights, I like to go kind of an orangey yellow, so that's about 45 for me, and then just slide that saturation up to add it in. Be careful with your saturation, don't go too heavy. I would suggest not going any more than 20. Usually I'm on about 10, 15 maximum. Same for your shadows, hold down option, you can slide up. I'm gonna add in a little bit of blue to this one. Good to know your complementary colors with split toning because they always work well together. So saturation i'm going to bring up not too heavy maybe about 15 on this one if i turn that off you can see how it's made that image a lot cooler by adding in that blue to the shadows and just change the overall tone so that's your split toning so the fourth one is camera calibration so this is where you can calibrate your colors depending on what camera you use but it's also an interesting way to get creative with your editing so let's go to a new photo come down to camera calibration So this photo here, if I wanted to create more of an orange teal kind of look, come down to my red primary. If I bring that more to orange, bring my blue more towards an aqua, you can see how that's created a kind of really quick teal and orange type of look. 
You do want to be a bit subtle when you're adjusting camera calibration because it can have a big impact on your photos. Be very careful with skin tones, especially when you're adjusting all of these because they will change your skin tone. So just be subtle if you are using camera calibrations with portraits, something like this where there's a bit of color, you can play around with it with a bit more freedom. So the last one, of course, is your HSL or color tab, which is hue, saturation, and luminance for each of the individual colors. Let's come across to a new photo. Quickly, I'm gonna make some adjustments to camera calibration again, just a subtle one on this one. And then I'm gonna come up to the HSL tab. So if you don't have all the colors open like this, you probably selected just on color. I like to have HSL open and so you can see everything. So starting with hue, this is where you can manipulate and tweak your colors a little bit. For instance, if I wanted to affect this area in the sky, I wanted to change the blues, I could make that a little bit more aqua, I could make it a little bit more purple. For this one, I wanna make it a tiny little bit more aqua. I also wanna make this area a little bit more orange. It's a little bit too yellow for my liking. So I'll come up to yellow, bring that more towards orange, and you can see how that's changed. If I was unsure of the color that area was, I could use this selector tool, click on that, and just pull down and slide up and it will adjust whatever color or colors I've clicked. Now, usually it's a combination of colors, so you can see there it's adjusting orange and yellow. Now that's really useful on your portraits. You can use this to select your skin tones. You can use it on hue, saturation, and luminance. If I pull down, it'll affect just that color I've clicked on for colors. So come back to this image. The next one, of course, is your saturation. This is the intensity of each of the colors. For this one, I might want to reduce the intensity of that sky. For me, it's a little bit too blue, so come down. This is where you can create a real kind of gray blue look if you bring that all the way down. For me, I like it somewhere in the middle, so I like to reduce my blues, but not too much. So I'm going to go about there. There's a little bit too much magenta in the sky there, so I'm going to come to my magenta and purple and just get rid of that. I want to make this orange stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to increase the saturation there. Careful increasing your oranges if they're skin tones again. Same with your hue or saturation. I usually wouldn't tweak your oranges too much because it is really going to affect your skin tones. So lastly, of course, you've got luminance here. So this is how much light's going to reflect off each of the colors. Example being blue here, if I wanted that to be less reflective of light, it'll look like it's a bit darker or less reflective to the sun. If I bring it up, it's going to be more reflective. So for this one, to make it really stand out, make those clouds stand out a little bit more, I'm actually gonna reduce the luminance in the sky. You can see the effect that's had there. Now, similarly, if I wanted to kind of increase the luminance on this orange area to make it more reflective to light, you can see how that brings that up a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with that quick kind of color adjustment. If I turn my HSL tab off, you can see the overall effect it's had to that image. So there you have five different ways you can play around with color in Lightroom. I would experiment and play around with all of them if you can. For me, I use a combination of these techniques when I'm color grading. Of course, you can come to a similar result by adjusting different effects. So as I said at the start, I'm giving away a free preset with some of my color grading. You can find the link down in the description, which will take you to my website. You can download that there. I've also got my preset pack available for purchase on my website there, so you can check that out if you're interested. So the last thing I'm gonna quickly jump on is the Adobe Color Wheel. I'll show you how you can play around with colors a little bit more and also come up with color themes. If you go to color.adobe.com slash create, you can play around with your color wheel. You can look at the complementary colors, play around with those. Of course, you've got your teal and orange there, kind of green and magenta. Really handy if you're not sure about complementary colors, you can play around, look at all the triads. The other useful thing is you can extract a theme. So if I get one of my photos and drag it over to here, you can actually see the different colors used in that particular photo. So this is really handy if you're wanting to experiment, maybe try a particular theme with your editing, also, you could screenshot someone that you really like the color of their photo editing. Of course, I wouldn't recommend copying, but it's a good way to play around with color and learn for yourself how to achieve different colors. So that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Remember to subscribe because I'm gonna have plenty more five minute Lightroom tutorials coming up in the future. For now, I'm TK North. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.